Because if we get there, and I believe we can get there with the help of God, yeah. we can love truly anybody. We can love no matter what they say, no matter what they've done, no matter where they come from, we can love them. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just lift your hands and say thank you, Lord. Thank you for that undying love. Oh, Hallelujah. That you, unconditional Jesus. love you still show us. No matter how many times we fail, no matter how many times we mess up, thank you for that undying love. The Greek word is called agape. Thank you. For, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Mm. Ooh, glory to God. How many just, ooh, man. The Spirit of God is so strong up here. Y'all feel it back here where you're at, amen? I just feel like He's wrapped me in a, in a blanket, amen to God. I just feel, just, ooh, if I fall out, just amen to God. Just keep praising Him, amen to God, I tell you, because... I don't know what he's going to do. Hallelujah. That's the best thing about the Lord. He's in control, not us. Hallelujah. Oh, Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. Go with me tonight if you have your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I pray, amen to God. I hope I don't hold you too long, but praise God, I can't say what the Lord's going to do. But this... This, this word, praise God, has been on my heart for a couple weeks now, but Sunday morning, praise God, Brother Radford up there at Word of Faith said something, praise God, that just kind of, you know how when you take, uh, when you're welding and you take that thing and you light the torch and it comes on, just kind of did that in my spirit. And praise God, things are available to us by God. They were all paid for at the cross. Now it's time we start using them, Amen. Amen. You know, God doesn't send you out to do a job without giving you the tools you need. Amen. Amen. I've never once seen God call you to a work and not equip you with the, ne the necessary things needed to get Amen. that job done. Yeah. Right. I don't believe God would call you into something and not provide. Because He will do that. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes it's not when we want it or sometimes it's not the way we want it. Well, we got to look outside the box, amen, amen. to God, and color outside the lines, if you will. Yeah. Praise God, because God is very unpredictable, and He can make He can bring things in in ways you would your carnal mind couldn't think of it. Well, and just for an example, you know, I've said this before, but the when the taxes were due, Jesus and His disciples <laughs> they went fishing, amen. Yeah, and they caught a fish, praise God, and the tax money was in the mouth of the fish. Amen. Now I know the Lord could have said He could have spoken and been right there. Yeah. But He did it in an unpredictable way to show them that God uses different things, yeah. praise God, outside of our modern way of thinking. Amen. See, Jesus today, Jesus when He walked the seashores of Galilee near, nearly 2,000 years ago, Come on. would not be accepted in the modern day church. Come on. He would not fit in with the modern day church. Because I'll tell you why. Because Jesus came to set the captive free. The modern day church does not care if the captive is bound up. Come on. The modern day church does not care if the real gospel preached. Come on. I mean, it's getting to the point today to where, praise God, they've quit praying for people for healing. Come on. They've quit, hallelujah, having, like you said earlier, testimony services. Yeah. They've quit having prayer lines. They've quit having yeah. uh, prayer meetings. Come on. I mean, you don't find churches anymore that pray. Come on. Amen. Come on now. Y'all help true. me now. Yeah, that's true. And it's getting to the point today that you find churches preaching salvation. I mean, I don't see many churches anymore even giving altar calls. Come on. Amen. It's just like it's over. Yeah. I think I think it was you a couple years back mentioned something. It may have been Brother Sleece, I don't know, but there was a church in Owensboro where the preacher was preaching, and 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 the pastor, <coughs> after he got done, he, he asked the congregation, he says, is there anybody in here who wants to get saved? And several people threw their hands up, and he says, you're saved. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. That's not the way. Come on. No. Praise God. God has got to <coughs> deal with your heart. Yeah. See, praise God, we can preach all day long, but if the Holy Ghost does not draw you and convict you and deal with you, praise well, God, it's yeah, not going right. to work. I can't, I can't preach you into heaven. Come on. I can't make you get saved. 
but it's the Spirit of God that draws oh, you. Yeah. Praise God. That's why you've seen in years in years gone by. Years ago, when the gospel was being preached, when the Lord was allowed to have His way in services, you would see people that you wouldn't even think of, Sister Reese, from the back of the church flood the altar yeah. with tears Amen. flowing down their face. I yeah. mean, you would see the hard-heartedest people break down like they were jello. Come on. Because God got a hold of their life. Amen. God was Amen. dealing with them, amen, to God. Yeah. God was showing them, hey, the way you're living is not right. I love you, but you need to repent. Come confess on. your sins and make it right today while you have the time. Because church, I'm telling you, time is running out. Amen. Amen. As we are talking Amen. right now, we are losing time. Come we on. are losing pressure. Yeah. Precious, valuable time. Because Jesus is coming whether we want Him to or not. He's coming, amen, to God. Whether the world wants Him to come or not, He's coming back whether you're right or not. Amen. Whether you're saved or lost, amen. He's coming back. That is His purpose. He fulfilled His true purpose at Calvary. Now He's waiting for you, amen, to God, to accept His gift. Amen. Time is running out. And it is, I, I think about that, what do they call that, the... The sands in the hourglass yeah. where they turn it upside down and it goes down yeah. and eventually it's down. It's yeah. empty. Time has run out. Yeah. Uh -huh. The hourglass of time is almost done. <clears throat> Come on. Yeah, I believe that. We can look yeah. out here in this world today. Oh, look at Ramana just look at the nation of America today. Look at all that's going on. Matthew chapter 24 is being fulfilled by verse, by verse, by verse. I tell you, we're seeing things we mentioned earlier tonight about the weather. Who would ever thought the first day of spring would be 84 degrees? Who would thought the last day of winter would be 82 degrees yesterday? Who would think that the rest of this week is going to be in the mid-80s? The first week of spring. That is not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. That's for like May or June. I tell you, God is trying to speak to this world. Amen to God. He is telling them, listen, I'm in charge of this thing. I'm in control of it. You better get right before it's too late. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. With that being said, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 1, and we're going to read down through verse 11. In the name of Jesus, reading from a King James Version. Amen? Amen. If we, if we still believe in King James here, somebody shout amen. 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 Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Aren't you glad, praise God, that the Holy Ghost led Paul to write that? Yeah. <laughs> See, God doesn't want you ignorant on spiritual gifts. Come on. He's going to try to make this thing plain. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols as ye were at, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. You cannot truly say Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah to God. I don't care all the lip service you have. Uh, that's the problem today. Amen to God. People is not being touched by the Spirit of God, but they got a lip service. Amen to God. They signed a membership card. Hallelujah to God. They, they may have went to a Billy Graham crusade, and I'm not speaking negative against Billy Graham, but they were just... Told to go down and say a prayer, repeat a prayer, when really the Holy Ghost wasn't drawn them, amen? Oh. Hallelujah. Now there are diverse, diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, amen? Amen. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. Yeah. Now that's important right there, amen? Amen. Because the modern day church has taken it to where it, it, it's not about the, the Spirit of God anymore. Yeah. Right. The, the the spirit of God was for the book of Acts. Yeah. Listen, we're still we're, we're still writing the book of Acts today. Amen to God. Come on. This modern day church is nothing like the book of Acts. Come on. God have mercy. Take us back to that day where we can be like the church was Amen. in the book of Acts. 
amen to God. Amen. That was the church, amen to God. When Jesus gave them a commission to go forth and yeah. spread the gospel, go forth, lay hands on the sick, that amen. they will be healed, amen. cast out devils in my name. What's his name, church? Jesus. Jesus, amen to God. That's the name we need to be under. Not no denominational oh. name, amen to God. I'm sick and tired, amen to God, of everybody being called a Baptist, an Assembly of God, a Pentecostal, a Methodist, and this or that. You need to have the only name over you, and the only name should be is Jesus. Amen, amen. to God. The amen. name above all names, Jesus. The name above any hallelujah organization, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm telling you today, people are wound up over denominations. Yeah. Let me say this. This is going to get me in trouble, but hallelujah. Denominations are man-made, not God-made. Hallelujah. Sure. Somebody say amen if you believe amen. that. Amen. Denominationalism is not of God. I believe it's of the devil. Come amen on. to God. To bring confusion to the body. God is not the author of confusion. Praise God. Come but on. that's the enemy. Praise God. That would come in and get us all messed up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Like they were at the Tower of Babel. Remember that? Yeah. They come in there, they want to build the tower up to heaven. Build their way by their works, amen to oh. God. That's what man's doing today. Trying to get in his own way. Trying to get in if I'm good. If I give this amount of money. If I go to the Salvation Army and feed the hungry. I know God will let me into heaven. I got news for you. It's only through Jesus amen. Christ that you're going to get to heaven, amen to God. John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. No man comes unto the Father yeah. but by me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Go over to God. You say, why do you get so loud for? Hallelujah. I'm just feeling the fire of the Holy Ghost in me. Go over to God. Thank you, Lord. We need more preaching like this. Come on. Yes. We need it today desperately in a generation that's on its way to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. The youth today are, are more wretched than I've ever seen. I tell you, when you turn on the news, church, amen to God, and an 18-year-old girl gets a, a thrills off killing a 9-year-old kid, something's wrong today. There's a devil loose. Hallelujah to God. And God wants to straighten out this world. Come on. That 18-year-old girl, she wrote in a diary. I don't know if y'all heard the story or not. It was on a few weeks back. She wrote in a little like diary journal that she had at home. She got this 9-year-old. She said, I always wanted to know what it felt like to kill somebody. And she said, I got to the point, she said, she said, in me to where the feel bad, the whole, oh no, I did it. And she said, when I actually went on and stabbed him and kept on stabbing him, it felt pretty good. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. And then listen yeah. to this. When she got done killing the nine-year-old, she went back to youth camp. Yeah. Something's wrong with that girl. Amen. She's lost like a ball in high weeds. Yeah. Say amen to God. The devil's got her all mixed up. Come on. But that's the youth of today. That's the generation that we're living in today. The church of old. If you had been to God, the church in the book of Acts, amen to God. You remember Ananias and Sapphira? Yeah. Uh -huh. When they lied to the Holy Ghost, amen. they yeah. lied to the men of God. What happened? What was it? Was it Ananias first? Yeah. He lied and he fell dead. Yeah. And they took him out. Yeah. And then Sapphira came in. Yeah. And they gave her a chance. Yeah. Gave her a chance, Brother Billy, to tell the truth. Yeah. You know, if she would have told the truth, it would have spared her life. Yeah. But she lied. Come on. And they said, the very men that took out your husband yeah. are there at the door waiting for yeah. you. And she fell dead. Yeah. Yes. See, hallelujah to God. I believe God wants to bring us back to that day. And we can get back to that day where conviction fell on people for wrongdoing. Come on. Amen. I still believe and remember the days of old when, praise God, when the man of God would come to the house, everybody straightened up. Come on. Yeah. Everybody would get straightened out. Because yeah. the man of God who knew the Word of God, who was with God, was coming to our home. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How many members that day? Amen, Amen. to God. Amen. Yeah. Boy, hallelujah, if you got out of line, you got your tail busted when they left. Amen to God. Oh. And in some cases, they do it in front of them. Amen to God. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
But today, though, if a preacher comes to the house, the kid will sit there and say, yo, 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 yo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be having his pants hanging down to his knees where you see the crack of his rear end and his underwear. That garbage makes me mad and I can't stand it. Mm -hmm. That ain't the way a, a holy, righteous person is supposed to live. Amen. Now, I believe God wants you, amen to God, to dress decent, amen to God. You may not have amen. suits and fancy dresses and amen to God, but you can get clothes, amen to God, and cover up stuff. Amen. Because I tell you, I'm sick and tired, amen to God, of seeing these girls run around here. I know somebody's going to say I'm being legalistic real quick, but I'm tired of seeing the tattoo, amen to God, right above their, their jean line and the shirt right here, amen. and then you bend down and you see more of a tattoo. Yeah. Cover that nasty wretched thing up. Amen. Go over to God. We don't need to be tattooing our bodies anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. I still believe in that. Amen to God. Amen. Shouldn't be piercing them up anyway. Amen. Go over to God. I'm going to say this. I'm already in trouble. I'm going to do it. I can't stand those people with them old things in their mouth. What, what is it? A tongue ring or something? Yeah. The thing was like an old ball, something about the size of that water bottle, trying to talk with it. And they're going like this. You can't understand. You ought to go jerk that thing out. Amen to God. Come on. Going to get in trouble for that. That's all right, though. It needs to be preached. Hallelujah. But I'm just simply telling you today, if the church, if we got back to the book of Acts, yeah. amen to God, we would see great things happen again. And all they did was believe His Word. Praise God. They put His Word into practice. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Where was that? Verse, verse 6. And there are diversities, diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with them. See, amen to God, the Spirit of God is given to you to be an overcomer. Yeah. To profit, praise God, not for yourself, amen to God, amen. but to profit in the things of God, hallelujah. To be, hallelujah, spiritually successful, if you will, praise God, to be an overcomer and not be defeated. See, amen to God, it's not God's will that you be defeated, amen to God, because He defeated Satan at the cross. Amen. Praise God. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. See, we're talking about the Holy Ghost here, amen? amen. The Spirit of Christ, amen? To another, faith by the same Spirit. Do you notice it's saying by the same Spirit? Yeah. There's no different the thing here, amen? Yeah. To another, the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Yeah. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. Yeah. To another, discerning of spirits. Let me stop right there for a second. How many, how many of us have seen just recently anywhere or maybe visited any place or anything have actually seen these gifts be put into use. Come on. It's very rare to see them anymore. Amen. It is yeah. very rare. You are hardly not even seeing them, period. Yeah. I can't tell you the last time I seen, praise God, a preacher prophesy to somebody. Come on. Being led by the Spirit of God. Now I've seen some preachers prophesy but it wasn't by the Holy Ghost. Amen. It was by a false spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah. See, if you get a word from God and it don't line up with His word, you better not take it. Because it ain't from the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's from the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Because I tell you, God will not speak contrary against His Word. Amen. He won't go against His Word. That's so if you get a Word, I remember about 10 years ago, they had a church up there in Hopkinsville. This so-called prophet came there. <clears throat> he came there and boy, everybody was flocking, Brother Billy. They were flocking there because this man was a prophet of God. Yeah. He had a Word for everybody. Yeah. Kind of like that Kim Clement on a TBN. I'm not trying to speak negative against him, but some of the stuff he does, I kind of question. Amen. Because, man, he can just walk across the floor. Man, he's got a word for everybody in here and their grandchildren. Yeah. I'm not saying God can't <clears throat> give you a word like that, but you've got to watch some of these people. Amen. But this prophet, what he did was, oh, man, the church got filled up. The church that we're having, it held probably about 300 people. And he would get up there and he had his fancy suit jacket on and his diamond rings and everything. And he was going through, just walking around. The Lord's, hallelujah, thus saith the Lord, you're going to come into a great sum of money. 
But you've got to give some of that money to the prophet of God standing here tonight. I mean, stuff like that. I'm serious. Yeah. We'll go to another. The Lord's going to send you a woman to marry. The Lord showed me it's that secretary working in your office. And I, I'm being truthful about this. <clears throat> These were things that man said. But it, I remember the brother I went with, actually one, uh, Brother Gary that would come here a while back, he was with me that night. I said, Brother, I said, that man, he's prophesying over. He's got a wedding ring on. Yeah. Uh, come on now. Come on. Our God in a polygamous God. Yeah, come on. Come on now, don't shut me down. <laughs> come on. Uh -huh. Yeah. But see, you got to you got to use your not only your 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 common sense, but your spiritual sense. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Because I tell you, I believe, amen to God, that that gift is still operating today. Amen. But I believe, amen to God, it's been placed upon a shelf because Christians don't want to use it. Come on. What we should get up and do every single day. We should get up and our prayer should be, Lord, use me in the gifts today so I can be a blessing to somebody for your glory. Amen. Praise God. Lord, if you have to use me in the gift of faith, Come on. use me in that gift today, Lord. Yeah. If you have to use me, Lord, in the gift of healing today, use me, Lord, for your glory. Amen. That you would see the glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Yeah. Lord, use me to prophesy over that which is dead. Amen. Amen to God. Like in that valley of dry bones, when He got over and spoke the word, amen Come to God, yeah. over those dead dry bones, it said life start coming back Come in. On. I mean, God can still do that today if we believe it. Amen. I mean, I still believe God today that the anointing, amen to God, which breaketh the yoke of bondage, I believe that when they threw that servant on, who was it, Elisha's bones or Elijah? Elisha. Elisha. Yeah. When they threw his dead body on those bones, that body came out there oh, running because yeah. the anointing was still on the bones, yeah, amen to God. Amen. See, I believe God, hallelujah God, still has a remnant today that is flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and wanting to use them today for the glory and the hallelujah and the growth of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. But it's very few and far between. We're seeing that anymore. Yeah. It said, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Let me stop here. Why does speaking in tongues scare folks? Yeah. I mean, let me go down this road, and I'm not trying to be mean in any way. But if you went to a Baptist church, and the Spirit got moving on you, and you started moving and speaking in tongues and giving the interpretation, they would swear up and down either you had a devil or you was out of your mind and you needed Prozac or something to calm you down. Amen. They'd want to have you in an institution, wouldn't they? Yeah. Because I'll tell you, and amen to God, I'm saying this, if Laura was here, she would agree. When I went up there to that, that Baptist church she went to, that place was dead in a funeral home. I mean, dead him. Somebody had been embalmed already. He said something. I, I agreed with it. And I said, glory to God. They all looked at me like I was a nutcase and just escaped from a mental institution. Come on. Because the Word got connected with my spirit Come because on, Christ is in me and they connected and it made a spark and made me shout. Amen. Woo! Amen. Amen. You speak in tongues, you're of the devil. That's what the religious world says today. Yeah. I'm telling you today, these are gifts of the Spirit that God still wants you to use, to operate in. Amen. But we ain't got a church that wants to stand up for Jesus. Come on. And all of these gifts profit nothing if you don't have love. That's yeah. what we were talking about earlier, Amen. praise God. You can be the greatest preacher, the greatest singer, the greatest whatsoever. You can have healing crusades. You can have the biggest ministry. But if you have hate and discontent towards your brother or sister in your life, it profit nothing. nothing. We've got to get back to the yeah. basics first off and to learn how to love one another. Amen. Because if you can't love one another here, the love of God does not dwell in you. Amen to God. You can't say you love God and hate your brother. It doesn't work. Oh, no. Bitter and sweet water does not come out of a fountain at the same time. Yeah. Glory to God. Man, I did not know I was going down this way. Thank you, Lord. All right, this is just the way the Holy Ghost is leading me. 
But I like what this last verse says in verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit dividing to every man su su uh, severally as he will. Thank you. Amen. Ultimately, the gifts, and the <coughs> spiritual gifts that we all can operate in yeah. are going to work for the purpose of the kingdom. Come on. Just like, and if you read later on down in the chapter and stuff, I tell you, praise God, later on this week or tonight, if y'all get a chance, go and read, hallelujah, chapter 12, chapter 13, and chapter 14 of 1 Corinthians. Yeah. Man, you will get a better understanding of all this more. Hallelujah to God. But I'm telling you tonight, just look at the body. This natural physical body that we have, we have arms, we have legs, we have feet, we have toes, we have fingers. Hallelujah, ears, nose, eyes, mouth, I'm all. all that. And it serves for a purpose. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, I could not move my body without my legs. Yeah. And even if I had legs, I couldn't move. I had to have my feet to walk. <clears throat> I'm all. See, I couldn't hold nothing without my hands or my arms. If I didn't have my eyes, I'm all. I couldn't see. If I didn't have my brain, I couldn't know nothing. If I didn't have the heart in my body, it wouldn't beat to pump blood to go through my body. If I didn't have blood, this old corpse would fall dead. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Even, you know, the, the Bible talks about just the outward parts, but even the inward parts too. Yes. If you didn't have your intestines and your stomach and all that, all this stuff makes up of this body. <coughs> Spiritually speaking, we need one another. We need all of what God... God has blessed you and you and you all with different gifts Amen. and with different yes. works for the kingdom. Amen. But see, if we are constantly bickering at each other about my work is better than yours and you're saying your work is better than mine and so forth, we are defeating the whole purpose and the enemy is winning and we're not going to see none of the gifts move. We're not going to see people set free. We're going to see people stay in bondage. Come on. We're going to see the lame at the gate remain at the <coughs> gate. Yeah. Praise God. Come on. We have got to get on the same page. When they came together in the upper room, praise God, in the book of Acts, it said... <coughs> Excuse me. They got together in one mind and of one accord. And when they did that, yeah. the Holy Ghost was poured out. Amen. Yes. And what happened? What did it say? 3,000 men were saved? Is it 3 or 5? Three three five. Five. Well, it's either 3 or 5. A bunch of them. Yeah. More than we see today. Yeah. If we see one person saved every two years, what I'm saying is today, church, the key basis to getting to operating back in those spiritual gifts, the first foundation of it is love, forgiveness, mercy, grace, compassion. You've got to have this, and that's what the body's missing today. Because I'll tell you one thing. If we examine ourselves truly today, Right now, we are not where we should be in Him. Come on. We don't love the way we should be loving. Amen to God. Yeah. And I know, I, I'm going to speak for myself. Hallelujah to God. I know I don't love certain people at certain times. I have relatives sometimes I don't care for. <laughs> uh, how many of you got relatives sometimes you just get aggravated at them? You don't have to raise your hand, praise God. Hallelujah. I don't want to get nobody beat. <laughs> Or if somebody, somebody will cut you off on the road and in that moment you'll get mad and praise God you're fixing to send them to see Jesus. Amen. I mean, come on now. It's all happened to us at least once. We've woke up some days where we're just mad at the world and we should be mad at the world. We should be mad at the devil. Praise God. Not at the world, not the people, but mad at the devil. Praise God. So it would be okay to be mad at the devil. A righteous anger, amen, like Jesus yeah. had. Yeah. Amen. But, I mean, you know, we get mad. We're not perfect. Now, some preachers preach once you get saved, you'll never commit a sin again. Oh, some, I, honestly, I'm not lying. There are some doctrines they preach. Yeah. Once you get saved, you're sinless perfection. Yeah. 
Never again. And if you sin, they said you never got saved in the first place. Yeah. So to, to wrap it all up, and we're closing here in just a second. <clears throat> if we want to see what we've seen 15 years ago, if we if we remember back, how many of you have ever been to old Brush Harbor meeting? Amen. Amen. Boy, they can get wild, amen. amen. I've seen people, praise God, the Spirit fall, and they jump in the creek down there, bad, get <coughs> baptized in the creek, run through the creek. Hallelujah. One guy I remember, he got filled with the Holy Ghost, and he started running off that property, and there was a pond over it, and he jumped in it, and there were some water moxes in there. And I mean, that man just was going all the way through it, and them snakes were going other ways. They were avoiding him. I believe they were avoiding, they were running from the Spirit of God, amen. Amen. Yeah. He run through that pond, come out. He took off out in the field. He didn't come back for a good while. At least almost a, about two hours later. I mean, he just kept running and running. But if we want to get back to the days of old, get back to what the true church is supposed to be, like in the book of Acts. Yeah. And I'll tell you today, yes, the book of Acts is written in our Bibles. But honestly, we're still writing it daily, or we should be. Because the acts of the Holy Ghost is not done. What we've seen at the Azusa Street Revival over 100 years ago, yeah. God is saying it's going to get greater than that. When we see some of the great pioneers of the faith that's gone on, like Smith Wigglesworth, yeah. and I've really been studying <clears throat> over him a lot, but just the things God did through him, the miracles, but... The only thing he said was he believed what Jesus said. Yeah. He took God at His word. There wasn't no special hocus pocus. But when you get to that place, you sacrifice too. You have to make sacrifices. The devil will fight you too. Yeah. And I'm telling you today, church, hallelujah. We're closing out, I promise. I didn't even get through it half in the touch what I was wanting to do. The Lord just took it down a different way, and that's okay. That's what He wants. Amen. We've got to love. We've got to forgive. Yeah. Amen. We've got to make things right. Come on. Because I tell you, if you actually think about things, maybe you've got bitterness towards in-laws, or bitterness towards your husband, or wife, or kids, or whatever. <coughs> Is it going to matter in five years? Come on. Just over stuff. People getting fights over materialistic things. Yeah. Is it going to matter if that thing yeah. blows up or falls off a cliff? Yeah. We still got each other. Amen. <laughs> and you know, that's the way the Lord intended for it to be. Like Billy said tonight. <coughs> Church ain't supposed to be where you just come and be entertained and go through a program and a ritual. Because every Sunday, church after church goes through the same thing. Yeah. There's no victory. There's no move of the Spirit. Yeah. But what we've experienced here tonight would not be accepted in 90% of the so-called churches around. Yeah. Because I know probably I went way past my time. Yeah. I would get 15 minutes, be done. Amen. <coughs> it's about meeting the needs. Yeah. Caring for those that are hurting. Showing mercy to those who's not had no mercy showed to them. Amen. Let's stand to your feet tonight if you're able. Praise God. If you're not, praise God. Just stay seated. <coughs> I don't doubt that one of us in here tonight is a born-again believer. I don't doubt that. I feel in my heart that everybody's right with the Lord. I really do. But I want you to just take a moment, close your eyes, and get your mind on the Lord. And just talk to God for a moment. And ask Him, Lord, if there's anything in me that's not like you are, you know, he said in John 3.30, he said, I must decrease as he increases. If there's anything that's not pleasing to the Lord, ask the Lord to reveal it to you. 
Make it right tonight. Father, I pray right now for myself and for everybody on the sound of my voice here. I ask you, Lord, tonight, Lord, to each one of us, Lord, make us who you want us to be. Make us like you, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to show mercy as you show mercy to us. Help us to love the unlovable. Love those who is considered not to be loved by the world. Help us to love those the way you love them. And forgive us, Lord, in any way where we failed you. Forgive us, Lord, where we've not shown love and mercy and forgiveness and compassion. Forgive us, Lord, of not going the extra mile when we could have. This is the only way we're going to get to the point to where we can start operating in the gifts. To start seeing great things happen like in the days of old. For you are no respecter of persons, Lord. What you said you would do for those in the days gone by, you would do for us today that are under your name, the name of Jesus. Father, as we close out tonight, I pray, Lord, that we would take this word and we would put it in our lives. Share it with others around us, but Lord, let us use it in our lives, though, first and foremost. As Brother Billy says, every time we depart, let us be a light in a world of darkness. Let us be the only living word that people reads or sees or hears, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be more like You. Be with us as we depart and go on the highways. Get us to our homes safely, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, Amen.